Hey. hey. We're going live. We're live. <laughs> that's my favorite countdown so far, bro. You like it? Yeah, I uh you know, I I use that one because that's the one that we used with um Will Cannon and Elise uh Budel. Um, the, one that, the one that I missed. The uh that's five. right. Yeah, that's uh they are uh podcasting entrepreneurs, right? So they're um uh, we, I was talking about them with, with Matt Francis, who is our focus guest, uh, today. Um, and, uh, but he can't make it live with us. So I pre-recorded, uh, he is a creative entrepreneur. He's been an entrepreneur for 25 years. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, we talked a lot about what that means to, uh, to him. Uh, but I use the, um, what I think, uh, Will and Elise, uh, to give them another shout out, they, uh, they, they give us the opportunity to, uh, like have a contest on this weekly live event podcast that we're doing. So we, they just finished up season four of their true crime podcast called killer heart to hearts. And so this, um, uh, and they're together, you know, and they, and they live together and they do this it's a it's a really beautiful relationship they have and um the countdown that i used is uh you know from Streamyard um called partners in crime so <laughs> it's i'm glad you like it yeah it's cool it almost has a little like a uh, sound of silence little uh air to it Ooh, yeah a little dark a little, little, little dark. dark with a little do 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 you know it's sort of like uh dark and dark and simple instrumentals i guess yeah, that's for real. Um, it's good. That's you're awesome. not getting any oh. echo, are you? You get everything sound okay and see oh, okay. Great, great on my end. Okay, cool. So we got a we got we got a hard stop at three thirty today. So anybody listening, our millions of fans, do not log in at three thirty one Eastern time because we will be done. That's right. And um, so, bro, we are on uh, episode number thirteen. Lucky number one three. Lucky thirteen. Big number. Cons consistent, a little bit better every week. And we're about educating and documenting versus promoting or other stuff. And so, let's talk, let's talk about uh, our guests and some other guests. And I know today's, I think today's main theme is entrepreneurship, right? So let's, let's educate and document what's going on out there in the world of like, Matt Francis, uh, some other entrepreneurial discussions you and I have been having, bro, over the last couple of weeks with individuals, mentors, opportunities, things like this. You know, it, it does come up, bro, like what, you know, the, the word entrepreneur, much like many of the other episodes that we've had, we, we use a lot of words that could be perceived as cliche or maybe misunderstood the way that movies are misunderstood, the way that books are misunderstood the way that these terms that we use to describe groups of people are misunderstood. And so um, our conversation, which by the way, um, so the conversation with Matt Francis with tap productions, um, I mean, he is a serial entrepreneur. And so I think that that's even another term that we should use because um, or define, uh, but that's going to be posted on LinkedIn. Uh, we're on LinkedIn live right now. And we are streaming live on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those nice, nice uh, platforms. But the the one hour episode with Matt um, will be posted right after this. And so uh, it'll be on our YouTube channel and, and LinkedIn. And so the episode um, or the interview, I should say, um, I've known Matt for for many years here in Charlotte. And uh, the I could show a clip. Maybe I'll show a clip because I, I paused it right at the time where I said where we met. And it's about a minute. You want to watch that real quick? Yeah, let's watch that because I don't know Matt nearly as well as you do, obviously. So let's watch yeah. it in for our audience. And it's a good intro to you know what we talked about. So I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully this will work. Now that you're a StreamYard pro, you know how to share video, you know how to get things going. This is impressive, bro. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> It's, it's a, it's, it, yeah, uh, it's an old hat. <laughs> kind of goes into the entrepreneur discussion there. 
Oh, okay, cool. So that's Matt. That's a bad pause action on him. <laughs> he looks like he's sleep, about to sleep. But uh, yeah, I'll just play it real quick. Uh, I'll make sure the audio is up. And he was out there doing his thing. You were out there doing your thing. I was like, wow, that'd be really cool. He's doing something that he's passionate about. Yeah, a little bit of audio, bro. The entrepreneur. He's going out there looking for more business. He's um, working with multiple groups. And when I started to ask around about you, you know, uh, and say like, Hey, do you know, Matt Francis and your, your list of clients and people that you've worked with, it was, uh, and I don't know if I've ever told you this, Matt, but when I started asking around, it was for that other company that I was with Pharaohs, right. Yeah. When we first met, which was, you know, we were an entrepreneurial company, but still I was employed there. Um, and man, everyone spoke so highly of you and was so, um, they would say that you're, you're so passionate and connected to the community um, and that you were all about what you have said just recently, telling other people's stories really well with visualization and production, hot value, high quality. And so that was something that in the hospitality industry and in hotels, we have great ideas, <laughs> but we don't really connect it with the technical expertise. And so right. um, we need to be out there tweeting this. We need to put it on our, let's do that social media thing. <laughs> yeah. So you've been an entrepreneur. You've been doing your own thing for, you said, 25 years now. Yeah, 25 years. Um, yeah, where, I, where I've, uh, I mean, I've, you know, to, your, to, to speak to your theme, I mean, I've changed over the years to different companies, different things. And, Ultimately, a lot of my clients, I've had clients for years that um, know me as my name and that's so they come to me. But um, I just love storytelling. I love filmmaking was my first passion. And then when social media became like a really big thing, I started really diving in and, and um, really helping people to tell their story. Because at the end of the day, I think that people don't talk about with social media. They keep talking about things like posting and I need to put more posts. They get caught up in how many posts. You know, I tell a client, like, I'm not going to charge you per post. I just want you to know that I'm going to be listening twice as much as I post. And that's the thing that a lot of people miss with social media. Like, who who cares if you answer a question nobody's asking, right? So mm -hmm. the imperative that we get out there and really listen twice as much as we're posting, no matter who's on your social media, what is what is it that people are really asking in your market? And how can you position yourself to be, you know, an industry expert and someone who really wants to help people inside of uh, what you do? I think um, uh, what I get most passionate about is those who are really trying to help others. Like, you know, they're filling a need. And they're not looking to just promote themselves. So, yeah. That's a good uh, good place to stop. So I'm going to uh, stop screen. So the um, th that is the theme around of what we talked about for about an hour. And the th you know he has been successful as he looks back. Right. I mean it's it's tough to make your own income and not depend on a weekly paycheck, which I think is one of the definitions of an entrepreneur. Right. So. Yeah. Um, or one of the side gigs anyway. But Matt talks about how he found his passion in what we call, what he calls helping others. But it was really about spending a deep amount of time immersing himself in the people that he was either hired by or clients, whatever you want to call them, and really trying to find out what the gap is that he can help them with, right? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he tells a story about, um, I guess, a, a Fortune 500 CEO that had hired him to uh, to do a job, and uh, and he said something that really bothers him. He says, he said she started the meeting out by saying, "You know what, Matt? You know, really, what we want to do here? We want to think out of the box. I really want to think out of the box." And he was like, "Man, I hate it when people say that." And so and so he came back and said, "Tell me what your box is." <laughs> and he said it took her like three or four minutes to even describe what their box is. Right. Mm -hmm. So he says, "How can you?" be out of the box if you don't know what your box is. Great conversation with Matt. So I would ask anyone that is uh, watching and listening to follow up and watch the full hour. So, bro, the question is, you know, that we talk through um, about what an entrepreneur is. And so I just made a, a, a post, an invite for people to listen and uh, on LinkedIn. And I said, you know, come check us out today. And the question I said is, uh, we're talking about what an entrepreneur is. I said, was Steve Jobs an entrepreneur? Uh, what about Gary Vaynerchuk? 
what about your next door neighbor that is repurposing paper towel holders into hats and selling them on TikTok? What about you? And I said, what, uh, what if you already are and are listening to people telling you that you can't do it, right? You all those reasons out there. Um, and so I said that, you know, any, any great question that anybody asks. And so anybody that's on LinkedIn live or YouTube, you can ask a question here and we'll see it. And I said, if, uh, if anyone asks a cool question, uh, I'll spend an hour with you. Uh, complimentary, of course. Um, you know, we'll get a winner if we get a thousand questions, but, uh, and I will tell you that is, I guarantee you it's much less of a cost to you financially to start your own business. Uh, and it is so much easier to go step by step if you do have an entrepreneurial mindset and you want to do something different like tomorrow. And so when I say that to people, they don't really know what that means. And so tell me, bro, what what is on what is an entrepreneur to you? What does that mean? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. Bro. I've thought about it a lot. First of all, we are streaming live in the United States of America, which makes that answer very different than it would in a lot of other countries in the world. And I thought about that a lot. Like Gary Vaynerchuk, you give as an example, he comes over uh, from uh, uh, Belarus, I believe, but he's from yeah. um, Europe um, and, um, you know, in, in a country that didn't have much. And there's a lot of the, uh, the story here, which I think is, and to answer, to answer the question, what is an entrepreneur? I think at different people have different perspectives of it, right? Like you're saying different people think uh, differently about that question and what it really means. And I think growing up here, like you and I were born in the United States. We grew up in the United States. We've seen a little bit of the world now, but we're not, we didn't grow up in a culture that was not the United States that was very restrictive and very non-entrepreneurial and then get an opportunity to come to the United States and then express ourselves in an entrepreneurial way. And that's my more tricky answer to your question. I think the most successful entrepreneurs um, in general, not all, but in general, are the ones who came from outside the country to the country or came from a very suppressed, uh, constrained, restricted um, background, childhood, et cetera, and then were able to express themselves in an entrepreneurial way. In short, I would say an entrepreneur is a creative expression of in, in, a, in a business world. Creative expression in the business world. Yeah, bro, you just popped in a memory there. For, so, you know, I'll just say immigrants, right? The uh, f foreign born people that uh, and then you you jump into the big pool of opportunity or the American dream or whatever. And you, you, you have multiple options now that you may not have had wherever you came from. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it can be vice versa. Right. I mean, there, there might be some, some things that are uh, suppressed, you know, here in the United States. And then you go to, I don't know, Canada and realize yeah. that the great outdoors, you know, in the, the Canadian Rockies gives you more of an opportunity to do something other than like Kansas city or something. I don't know. Exactly. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, and I might mess this up, but I I've heard recently, um, uh, it was um, Jordan Peterson getting interviewed by somebody, and I'm sorry, I don't, uh, I'm not able to uh, give credit, but he gets interviewed a lot, and um, and his answer to one of these questions about generational attitudes towards responsibility and finding meaning in your your life, mm -hmm. that's his message usually, like responsibility helps you find meaning um and strength and so um he said and he's not he's quoting somebody else uh he said uh hard times make strong men he was referring to to men you know strong people but he said hard times make strong men strong men make easy times easy times make soft men Soft men make hard times. Yeah, and it loops, right? And it loops, right? And it's uh, and so the uh, I think the person that was saying that was maybe at a uh, at a commencement speech um, that actually quoted that, and I remember seeing the picture of it. And so, you know, you think about it; it's a very deep thought, right? It's like, yeah. well, what time am I in? You know, right. and so 
uh, the so we grew up uh, with mom and dad, and so uh, that created a wonderfully stable life for us. You know, mm -hmm. definitely comparative. Sure, we all struggled, but yeah. on a scale from one to ten, we probably struggled a two. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, there's people struggling right now at a or that live at an eight, nine, or a ten, or were yeah. born into an eight, nine, or a ten. Yeah, um, and then are uh, like you're saying are uh, put into an environment where um, they've struggled. And so they're stronger, right there. And, mm -hmm. and then they're, and if they have an entrepreneurial concept or an idea, then it becomes easier for them to implement it. I think because they, they've already overcome such adversity. Yeah, um, I, would say, I would say more natural. I wouldn't say easier, but yeah, I know what you mean. I think the intention is more natural because they've been conditioned, they've been hardened in a tough environment. So it's more natural to express themselves in an entrepreneurial way. You know, just yeah. like Gary Vaynerchuk came here with no money and then worked for 10 years or whatever in his dad's liquor store and did all this stuff. He was just learning and growing and all this stuff. Meanwhile, as he was growing up before he was old enough to work in the liquor store, he was trading um, baseball cards and all sorts of other yeah. collectibles, right? And he was like, hey, you know what, if we go to a, instead of like and playing around with my friends this weekend on the swings and all this stuff, I can go, you know, set up a table at a flea market and buy some baseball cards for a dollar at the store and sell them for $5 on the weekend. How many, how many of those cards can I do this weekend? So again, maybe because of his upbringing, you can look at a lot of different things, but either way, that was him as a little kid. Like he was the one as a little kid looking to sell stuff and looking to, um, find ways to profit, right? To to make a sale that benefited the the buyer and the seller, and then to do that more and more, and in other creative ways. And he kept continuing to express himself. So that's one example. And I think about that. We didn't have that need. Our great grandfather, coming from England, did have that need. He was in England, and what little we know of the story, but he was in England, and he wanted more opportunity for his life, for his future, for for his future wife that he eventually proposed to and, and married. Um, and he got on a boat from England and came to the United States looking for opportunity. And I remember this story because uh, my son, Michael, had to write a story back in grade school. He's, he's older now. And he had to ask our dad and some other people in the family um, about that question. Like, why did he come here? Like, why did he move, you know, alone from United States, uh, from England to United States. There must've been a reason. You don't just get on a boat, put your belongings in and come over here. You don't do it for hardship. And he did it for opportunity. And then he went back and he, and then he got engaged to his girlfriend at the time, brought her back over, started a family. And that became the, um, the lineage on our, on, our, on our grandmother's side, right? In, in here in, yep. in New England. So that story, and, and the more I learned about him and what he did when he got here is fascinating. He had so many different things. He was a, I would say, a serial entrepreneur. I know he was a music teacher. He did this. He did that. Um, I think he might have even repaired some musical instruments too, like our, you know, Uncle Wayne does, and so forth, and yeah. all this. Uh, anyway, there's a lot to it. There's a lot more to the story. But again, back to he came probably from a much harder time than we did growing up, and then he saw opportunity somewhere else. Went to explore it. And said, Yeah, I think there's something here. Let me go put my roots down here and uh, make something of it. Right. And he did. So he had that, that sense of urgency to change his circumstance and then express himself creatively in a, in a business way. And then in multiple business ways that he did. Multiple business ways. Right. And, uh, without, a uh, without a lot of, I guess, options. Right. So you, you, uh, it's like, you know, we're, we're, where he in, eventually moved to Pawkatuck, you know, uh, next to Westerly, Rhode Island, there was um, that neighborhood was all uh, developed in the early 1900s for, for the mills, the, yes. the textile yes. mills, which is yes. still there and now is converted to apartments. And um, but it was, you know, they they were there, and you know, say there's a hundred houses there, the mill houses, and where they uh, where Dad eventually, you know, grew up. Yeah. Um, tiny houses, man, and, and small yeah. houses. But if something broke, you know, you, 
you weren't, you didn't call yourself an entrepreneur. <laughs> you, you found a way to fix it. Right. Yeah. I mean, and there were much less handymen around. You were the handyman or your neighbor was. And the whole concept of like uh, going across the street to get salt, you know, or sugar asking your neighbor um, th that develops the mind to be able to say, well, if I only have the, if I'm out of salt and I yeah. need salt, um, the entrepreneurial mindset is if I don't have a budget for salt, right, I'm going to go find salt. I got to go yeah. find it. I got to go find a way to get it done. And so yeah. um, I've, uh, you know, that, that word entrepreneur, uh, it, very similar to agile, right? We talked about uh, last couple weeks about like, what is agile? And, and it's still a mindset. You said it's a mindset. Yeah. Um, I think entrepreneur is also a mindset. It's, uh, um, you know, there, there's also something that came up in the talk and uh, we didn't call it this, but there's a part-time there's the concept of being a part-time entrepreneur mm -hmm. and a full-time entrepreneur. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Evelyn on our episode number two, uh, Evelyn Barnes, Willingham, you know, she's a, a, a full-time hotel general manager, right. And she started a nonprofit called boss women on a mission, right. That was an yeah. awesome episode with Fantastic. such a, a lot of really cool people. And, uh, and then also Charles Fry, he was on that episode, but also uh, on another episode where I, or uh, I guess on our YouTube channel, I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. And yeah. he's uh, uh, like a full-time, uh, he, he works in, uh, he, he's uh, like on jet engines or, or no, yeah. like rocket engine. He's like a rocket scientist. I, I know he's not, but, you know, he's in that industry Yeah. Um, in Huntsville, Alabama. You know, that's where NASA is and everything so um but he started cni solutions and that's a a non-profit doesn't matter if it's non-profit non, -profit, non -pro the only thing that makes something non-profit required you got to spend 90 percent of your revenue on your mission you know that's really yeah. the the and so they chose to do that that's a very entrepreneurial mindset they they created something and they're doing it right and um somebody can start an llc for 250 dollars and do the same thing while they are employed full time. That doesn't mean they're not an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like just because they have, and I've often said that, and I shouldn't say that. Like if you're working for another company, you're not an entrepreneur. That's crap. You know, that's not true. You know, there's uh, and that's, those are the, one of the things that people consistently told me yeah. that um, you need to work for another company. Uh, and if you do, they own you. And you yeah. can't do anything else on the side or it's too difficult to do something on the side. Yeah. And that is absolutely not true. Um, working for another company is probably the most, the smartest thing an entrepreneur could do while they build their entrepreneurial, like you said, their, their creative business concept. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and you can do that and, uh, and not be in conflict with your employer because you're doing something on the side. It's like having a part-time job. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, um, exactly. It's a lot of fun. Entrepreneurship uh, in the United States, I think, is a tremendous opportunity. And I think if people stop, watch this podcast, listen, you know, pay attention to what they might want to do, uh, they'll probably find some entrepreneurship opportunities in their family. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it's someone else. Maybe it's their spouse um, or uh, one of their friends or someone in their family. But there's a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurship. And in the digital world today, a lot of the younger generation are, are stumbling into this on their own. They're, they're TikTok millionaires. They're YouTube millionaires, right? There's all these things happening that we didn't grow up with, but the younger generation did. And the ones who are entrepreneurial found ways to start making money with it. It's like, oh, interesting. So they explore it and they go that way. And so there's a lot of different ways to creatively express yourself now, whether it's online or whether it's offline. Uh, there, there's a lot of different um, aspects of business. And there's always ways to get better, right? Entrepreneurs look for the better the better solution, a better way to provide service to people and humanity. Okay, what does that look like? All right, if it's not being done now, maybe you could do it. You could start a company to do it, right? It's about differentiating yourself. That's where Matt's message comes in really good. Matt Francis with branding and so forth. It's so important to tell your story in your own way that speaks to the audience that you want to speak to. And that's not, that's something we naturally want to hear. And it, it, it's great to hear. But most of, them are, most of us aren't, aren't ready to naturally say it. 
Mm. Um, so it takes practice. And that's where someone like Matt and his services uh, are really important because you want the, you want the story, just like if you're, just like you're watching a good movie. The good movie is not just put together in, in two minutes. Somebody writes the screenplay, they write the story, character development. You talked about hero's journey on one of our earlier uh, podcasts. That's, that's in the movies, right? You want a very small snapshot of that in your story as a brand as well. You know, why does your company matter? Who cares, right? That question should be answered in your story. You know, I, um, I recently found a pretty cool uh, framework, you call it. I, I know I asked you uh, about it. We haven't talked about it on this podcast, but it, it's Japanese. It's called Ikigai. It's a framework, and it is very relevant to what we're talking about. Um, and we say we don't, we, we document and not promote, but I will promote the, the fact that you and I, you know, we're, we're partners and we just started a, a nonprofit called Hospitality Industry Impact Initiative. <laughs> going to launch into the world, into the sky pretty soon. Um, but we are uh, going to explode apprenticeships and internships and learning and education um, uh, in the hospitality uh, industry, uh, industries, hotels, food service, tourism, uh, event planning. Uh, and we're also going to explode the concept of, of employee ownership, okay, which is a catalyst to them starting or you know converting something to an entrepreneurial enterprise themselves right so um ikigai i found i just found like by looking up i think i used chat gpt to be honest i said and i just vomited some thoughts and i just said what is this called like what yeah. am i trying to figure out here and it came up as an option of you know what you're describing is ikigai framework and so what 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 that definition is and please look it up everybody um it's the harmonious convergence of discovering or rediscovering what you love what you're skilled at what the world needs and what you can be rewarded for it's the the say maybe it's a river you know those four things are converging and so the idea of an entrepreneur is to be like, hey, what do you love? All right, so I love baseball. You know, mm -hmm. okay, what are you skilled at? Uh, I can't play baseball. I never picked up a bat, you know. Um, so maybe uh, I'm skilled at something about knowing the rules of baseball. Okay, um, what the world needs. Does the world need you, uh, the, the, the knowledge of, of baseball? Okay, maybe uh, I can be a, a commentator because I yep. know a lot about baseball. And what can you be rewarded for? Is there a job out there? Is there some sort of disruption or thing that I can do to use my knowledge about that? It's a wonderful framework to uh, enter into like even a new job um, before you even apply to a new job to figure out like, is this something that I love? You know, and then you become skilled at it and then you become great at something that you love. And Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about that. And he said it's... Uh, 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 some other people talk about it too, but I think he says um, it's not about being happy. It's about, you know, finding something and becoming great at it. And if it's something that actually makes you happy, yeah. then, oh, it's a beautiful thing. And so that's where the, uh, those, um, the, the convergence of those things is pretty cool. So yeah, I, uh, I, I learned a, a new word, a new framework, Ikigai. And it's, it's fun to say too. I'm going to say it again. Ikigai. Ikigai. <laughs> I K I G A I. It's a Japanese framework that I'm sure has a deep history that I don't even know about, but I just found it and I thought that was pretty cool. It's very relevant to what we're talking about. It's uh, we should put a link into the book. Uh, it's a fascinating audiobook. So you didn't know this, but I'll surprise. Well, maybe it won't surprise you. It's one of my favorite books. I heard I heard that it was uh, there, there's a book that's written about it. It's a concept and it's there's a lot more to it than just a book. But someone wrote a book about it a couple of years ago. I think it was in 2020, but it might have been before that. And it ended up on a bestsellers list, like recommended list for like agile coaches and professionals. So I said, oh, someone else is recommending it. Let me go look at it. I downloaded it on Audible. Absolutely fascinating. I've always listened, I've already listened to it at least twice. A lot of great. You did the book about Ikigai? Yeah. I, I, so I think it was I, probably I, what I found because I found something on Amazon and somebody wrote about it as being a framework for life and business and all that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's in uh, it's it's uh, it's in book form. You can get on Audible. You can get the paper book, whatever you want. 
highly recommend it. It's a fascinating book. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. It's really, really cool. I, I highly recommend it for anybody, especially the people who are listening to this and want to become or consider becoming entrepreneurs. I'm sure it's this one that I just found, Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. Yes. By uh, Hector Garcia and uh, Francis Miralles, if I'm saying that right. It looks yes. like a different spelling. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to listen to it too. I got an audible credit. Uh, I'm going to yeah. give it a listen, put it in my mobile, uh, my mobile classroom. All right. In All right. Car. And do it up. It's great. Cool. Well, bro, we're coming up on three 30. Yeah. This has been All great. Right. Great sharing. Yep. I think, um, I got my countdown done. That was cool. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, you know, the, the, the topic, uh, kind of evolved this week. And so, uh, thank you to Matt Francis. Uh, I will mention, so Tap Productions. Um, Matt's also a poet. Like, he's got his own poetry blog spot. So, but you can find it all on Tap Productions. And uh, I didn't even talk about the acting project, bro. He he's a, 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 teaches youth, and he teaches um, uh, middle school age uh, kids and students uh, in, in acting and improv. And he's got this project... Uh, called race to broadway that he talks about on the interview and he's bringing them into uh acting um kind of extending the experience for them as young people and one thing i want to say that i I, i'm going to keep quoting him on this because we talked about the concept of what you just brought up about uh people creating their personal brand and making money on tiktok and stuff and uh and he says that he says this all the time but i had not heard it before he said, if you breathe, you have a brand, right? And we talked about, yeah. like, all right, well, if you have a brand, that's something that the world might want. He said, if you breathe, you have a brand. I just love that. So let's leave it on that. How's that? Let's leave it on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank all you, right. Matt, uh, Matt for, the, for the quote. Words of wisdom. Yeah. All right, bro. Thanks for the, uh, the, the solid power half hour. Go team. And uh, yeah. we'll leave it on that. We're doing it again next week. Next week. Love everybody. See you next time. See you next time.